just done the test for the MSI GT72S, that's that massive gaming beast behind me. So we're going to the other end of the laptop spectrum now with the Asus UX305CA. This is a thin and light 1.2 kilogram, 1,250 euros uh, Ultrabook with the Core M7 inside. Personally, I've been looking forward to this because uh, I tested the i7 version, the Core i7 Broadwell version of this last year, and it was a fantastic all-round package. We've just finished the German review. Uh, we're still translating the uh, English review for you, but uh, there's the score there. I'm sure you can understand that. A very good 89%, and 89% is a very good score at Notebook Check, where devices rarely, rarely go above 90% in their score review. Now, it's 12.3mm uh, thin. There's a 45 watt hour battery in this and it's fanless. This is actually focused a little bit more on the lightweight end of the spectrum. 1.45 kilograms is the weight of the Core i7 version. It has the fan in and it has an extra 11 watt hour battery inside, which brings it up to 1.45 kilos. So this one's the ultra mobile focus one with the slightly lighter weight. Now this one has got the, uh, let's just bring that into the camera there, the Quad HD matte screen now you can see the reflections there being uh, scattered and that really is a peach of a screen uh, i'll give you some details on the test results we did at notebook check and the lab test results we did uh, in a minute but uh, just take it from me the colors are sharp uh, it goes to a reasonable brightness there's some reasonable viewing angles on this ips screen uh, and there may be one downside i'll tell you about in a minute Keyboard, well, there's the keyboard. It is a very good keyboard. Uh, the only thing we can say is that really it should have a backlight. Uh, the mouse pad uh, is pretty good, pretty smooth, um, but the backlight would have just really finished that off and nicely for the perfect sort of input package there. As I said, it's uh, incredibly thin and light. Uh, but they've managed to pack in three full-size USB ports and a full-size SD card reader as well. We've also got HDMI out, and you can see that there. There's the uh, headset port, HDMI out, and a full USB port there. There's the power port. There's no USB-C on this. Let me turn that around, and you'll see another two full-size USB three ports there, and an SD card slot as well. So reasonable selection of ports. I think that SD card slot, quite important for some people if they're thinking of doing uh, photo and video editing. Now, can it do photo and video editing? Well, yes, the Core M7 is actually pretty good. I'm going to give you some performance test results in a minute. But first, let's just take a look at the details on that screen. 390 nit center brightness there. There it is there. Unfortunately, uh, in German, but I can just run you down some of the uh, figures we got. There's the contrast there at 565 to 1. So not that brilliant. The black levels at 0.69. Uh, giving a contrast of 565, could have been a little bit better. Uh, the color accuracy, 304 on the color and 2.88 on the grayscale there. So uh, accuracy on the colors, pretty good. We found, we found some pulse width modulation being used for the screen brightness, uh, details of that on the site. There's a quick look at that 1429 hertz figure there. We've also got some reaction times on the screens. That's more for gamers, and you won't find this really being useful for, for much gaming. Although we have got one game result we can give you later on. And there's an overview of some comparison devices, including the UA there. It's the uh, Core i7 version. That's this one here in the middle. And uh, that one's with the uh, full HD IPS screen. Right, remembering we've got a Core M7 inside and not a Core i7. What are the differences? Well, actually, they are pretty much the same processor, but clocked slightly differently and controlled slightly differently in thermals. They both, both idle down to uh, 800 megahertz. And they both can clock single core up to 3.1 gigahertz. But that's where the similarities end, because the Core i7 version will clock uh, for higher, for longer. It's, it's designed um, as a package that can get warmer. It's a 12 or 30 watt TDP uh, device. And it's got a fan as well, so it's going to hold those higher clock rates for longer. The Core M is designed for short bursting to those 3.1 uh, gigahertz speeds, 2.9, 2.8 for dual core, uh, and not hold them for too long. So what you will see, uh, if you're, for example, video rendering uh, or gaming, you'll see that clock down gradually over time, whereas the Core i7 will hang in there. Uh, so if you're looking for a little bit more long-term performance over tasks, 
then look for the Core i7. But if you're looking at very quick loading of web pages and very quick usage of web apps, the Core AM7 is ideal. Let's have a look at some of the performance scores then. Uh, I first want to look at the R11.5 multi CPU scores. Um, there's the uh, UA at the top. That's the um, Core i7 version. And if we go down here, you can see 2.47 for the Core M7 version. So if I just uh, click that there, you'll see the Core M7 version coming in, well, as that clicks back, at 30% less, basically, than the uh, Core i7 over that uh, test. Uh, on the single bit scores, the, um, the difference is a little bit less, around 20%. There's a good SSD inside this. Uh, I'll give you some scores for that in a minute. But that's helping the PC Mark uh, 8 scores uh, uh, along a lot. So you'll see, let's pick it out. There is the UX305 CA there at 2614. And then we can just go up to the uh, UA version there at 3341. Uh, so there's a, a bit of a difference there. It's about 15% uh, uh, difference in the scores but let me just double check that by clicking there and looking down 22 percent slower the core m version so you're getting a feel for where the core m uh, fits in uh, so this can be considered a really lovely companion device for web browsing web activities um, short-term video rendering hd video rendering and, and uh, video editing on this should be no problem at all uh, with two or three timelines some fades some overlays not too many filters because uh, that really relies on cpu usage rather than uh, the quick sync video processor that is in here that can really help speed up those things Long-term gaming is really a no-no. I said I'll give you some scores. I'll give you those in a minute. But first, I want to look at the uh, SSD scores there. We've got a Micron SSD inside. We've got the 512 gig version in here. So go back to that price. It was 1250 euros for a Core i7 with a half a gigabyte of SSD, eight gigabytes of RAM. Those ports, the very, very lightweight, fanless, silent, and fairly cool build. I think that's actually not too bad uh, a value. Those are the SSD scores there. Maximum 475.2, uh, sorry, yes, 475.2 on the sequential reads. On the 4K, right, an important one, 90.66. So, so I don't see uh, many people having a problem uh, with throwing around large files on the, uh, on the Zenbook UX305CA. Uh, uh, 3D Mark 11 performance is down there at uh, 1188, and that's not that good, really. Uh, there you can see some comparable devices. The Dell XPS 13, the Core i7 version of that coming up, coming at, um, let me just, sorry, 3D Mark 11 scores we want there. 1556, and we go down the list there, and you'll find the CA a little bit further down there at 1188. Just above it, um, the UA version at 1525, sort of matching that Dell XPS uh, 13 performance. And there you go. We did our work testing games for you there. A really good set of uh, gaming test results uh, from our reviewer. Three of those coming in. So the original Tomb Raider 2013 game coming in at minimum settings, 40.6. Uh, Minecraft no problem, World of Warcraft no problem at low settings. You might even be able to get a little bit of League of Legends done at low settings as well, but we didn't test that. Um, more details on the gaming then in uh, the full review, uh, but just bear in mind that there's not a lot of green there to really consider. One of the downsides sometimes to these fanless devices is they're allowed to get very warm. That's not the case with the uh, UX305, and here you can see the maximum temperatures there, 39 38.6 .1, on the top right, so 39.1 would be across here, 38 across there. Really nothing to worry about at all. Anything below 40 is really nice and cool. Now I've got something to say about uh, battery life on this. Now you're getting a smaller battery in there, uh, 11 watt hours. I wonder how much that would have weighed, probably under 100 grams to add that in. Would I have gone for 1.3 kilos and a 54 watt hour battery instead of the 45 watt hour battery? Well, looking at these battery life figures, I think yes, I would, because we're only getting 6 hours 42 Wi Fi serving. That's not a bad figure, of course, but uh, compared to the UA version, we were getting uh, a little bit more than that. We were getting 561 minutes compared to 402 minutes, so 40% more. And I think one of the reasons for that, and I've seen this on a number of devices, 
is the QHD screen. The very tight, very high DPI screens as don't have a lot of space to get the light through. There's a lot of electronics and not a lot of uh, uh, translucent material to get that uh, uh, backlight through. So consequently, you're having high LED backlight power. And I'm seeing this on the UX305. It doesn't idle down below 3 watts with the screen on, whereas some devices, uh, I've seen the XPS 13 with the matte Full HD non-touch screen, idle down to under 2 watts. Um, and looking at the figures that we had on the Core i7 version, which was a Full HD screen, it looks like that was idling down a bit lower as well. So bear that in mind, you've got this extra 1 watt at low light to 2 watts usage at high brightness with this screen. That's the um, trade-off you're going to have for the QHD screen. Personally, I would prefer to have a Full HD screen on this and save that 1 to 2 watts on the brightness. But if you're working, uh, if you have that sort of minimum entry level requirement of 1920 by 1200 as some do this doesn't reach that so you might want that QHD uh, 4k native um, videos for example um, yeah well that's that's up to you it's the trade-off power versus resolution right I'm gonna have to translate the pros and cons for you now because it's in the uh, German we haven't got the uh, English uh, translations done yet so let me go through it but before I do Thanks for watching, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe, it helps us, and it also gives you notifications when new videos go up. And if, the, if you got anything out of this video, it doesn't take a second just to press the thumbs up button, give us a like, that helps us push these videos out a bit further, a bit faster, and uh, to um, improve our technology that we use to test devices and record the videos for you. Pros and cons. Going from the top, matte Bildschirm. That's a matte screen, and it is a nice matte screen. Lautloser, lautloser Betrieb. Fanless, noiseless uh, operation. sich kaum. It doesn't get warm very much. That's fine. That's good. Gute Tastatur. That's a good keyboard. Ah, we don't have that backlight. That's mentioned in the cons. Gute Akkulaufzeiten. That is a good battery life. I wouldn't class it as the best in class. Uh, the actual Core i7 version with a slightly bigger battery seems to be also a little bit more efficient. Schneller SSD, fast SSD. Uh, although it's not a RAID system, that's getting half a gigabyte a second uh, on sequential reads. On the negatives, then, contra durchschnittlicher Bildschirm. <laughs> on the contras. On the contras, then. Du <laughs> On the contras, durchschnittlicher Bildschirm Kontrast. Hey, I get a thumbs up for that, right? Average uh, screen contrast. Uh, so we didn't see a massive bl uh, contrast between black and white on this. The black levels aren't too black. Keine Tastenbeleuchtung. That's what I said. No backlight on the keyboard. I really hope Asus bring that in on the next version of the UX305 because it's about the only thing missing from the input area on this device. So thanks and danke to Sasha Moak, who was the reviewer on this. The tester, I think, was Sebastian Jensch in the lab. There's Sasha's uh, overview scores. 89% is an excellent score. This is an excellent device. 1,250 euros is going to get you probably one of the better Core M builds you'll find on the market today. There's the breakdown of scores then, so if you've got something in your head, if you're not too worried about that backlight, for example, that's not going to knock points off the score for you. Uh, battery life, if you don't want the best in class, if you're just happy with that six hours, and that is a good six hours, let's face it, that's a good six hours of uh, a pretty fast uh, Wi-Fi browsing, there shouldn't be a problem with battery life for you. So take a look at those scores, map them out in your head, and see if that fits your requirements. For a 13-inch ultra mobile, 1.2 kilogram, Ultrabook, really nice device. One of my personal favorites, uh, along with the XPS 13, of course, one of my personal favorites. This one um, really oriented towards ultralight operation. Again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next Nobuchek Tech Review.